Welcome to another movie review. Uh, this continues my top 100 films of all time, and we're looking at uh, the one at number 92 today, and it's High Noon, which was released in 1952 and directed by Fred Zinnemann. It stars Gary Cooper, Grace Kelly, Lon Chaney Jr., and Lloyd Bridges. This western classic opens with the famous cowboy song Don't Forsake Me Oh My Darling sung by Tex Ritter and in many ways it tells the same tale as the movie how love can overcome anything but this is only a subplot of the typical goody and baddie tale set in a sleepy town that's about to be woken up again. Marshall Kane, played by Cooper, is due to throw, throw in his badge on the day he gets married. But as he and his new wife, played by Grace Kelly, are about to leave, he receives a message that one Frank Miller has been released from prison and is on his way to the town. Now three of his gang are waiting at the railway station on the edge of town and Miller is wanting payback for the death sentence he received courtesy of the judge and Kane. The train is due at noon. So there we have it. The rest of the movie builds the tension as time ticks away to, towards noon. Kane's moral sense of justice and stubbornness dictates him staying to confront the impending enemy. The gunfight and his new wife isn't that symp sympathetic. The film contrasts this goodness in Cain with the other side of human character. The cowardice, the fearful, the do-nothings. And then there are the bullies and the macho men. Again, as I've done before, I like recalling scenes to help you get a picture in your mind of the movie's quality. The first scene, Cain, in the church listening to the congregation discussing the wrongs and rights of handing out justice. Secondly, Cain with Howe, the previous marshal, played by Lon Chaney Jr. When Howe talks about public apathy towards law and order and all the politics that are involved and advises Cain to leave. And third, Cain's ex-lover describing what love for a man means to his new wife. Zinnemann directs the final scenes with precision. The music builds tension as the time draws near. Everyone is waiting in the bar, in the church, at the railway station and we see the deserted streets, the empty rail track. Everything is ready for the main event. It's a magical Hollywood moment. As for the gunfight, well, no spoilers from me. Just get to watch it. It's only 80 minutes, but possibly the greatest western of all time. It was the winner of four Oscars, and Cooper one for best actor. As I said, this is number 92 in my top 100 films of all time.